When it comes to steerable pyramids, we're typically only dealing with a magnitude decomposition. So we can see that this decomposition right here at different frequency subbands from high frequencies to low frequencies at different orientations, it really only gives us magnitude information. In this example here, we have our test image once again, and we have our Fourier transform decomposed into magnitude and phase, and we have our reconstruction right here, a magnitude and phase. And we can see that the magnitude really gives us a bunch of garbage, but the phase gives us the edges. And this is because of something called phase congruency, because the phase information determines when the complex sinusoids in the Fourier, Fourier domain overlap with each other and give us strong information such as edges and corners. And if you want to learn more about it, I have another video that I've done on it previously that I will link in the bio. So what I'm getting at is that we can take our steerable pyramid here and have a complex representation that shows us local magnitude and local phase at different orientations and, mag and frequency bands. So on the left of these pairs right here, I have the magnitude and the right I have phase. And it's a little easier to go in and see some of the that is not what I wanted. All right, right here. So hopefully we could see this a little bit better. Maybe not. Right. I wish I could just re can redo this. Okay, that's about what I had. So sorry about that. So this right here is a lower frequency band, and we could see that we at this certain orientation looks like a zero degree orientation. And we could see that we could see the magnitude right here, and we could also see the local phase changes along this orientation. We could see it here, here, and here, and we could see when these sinusoids are changing. And that is what phase gives us. Phase gives us information about how the image is changing at localized regions. And we can do this at different magnitudes and frequencies right here, different orientations and spatial frequencies. So we're going to walk through this code and see how to do this decomposition. So just like last time, we have the same parameters right here. Depth determines how many frequency bands we're going to use, orientations, how many orientations we're going to use, the transition width between the low and the high frequencies. But now we have this complex pyramid parameter that we're setting to true. So the interface with the class is just the same. We make the steerable pyramid object, except this time we have a complex one. Um, so for the low and the high pass, nothing's changed. We still have the high pass here, the low pass. It's cropped for visualization. And now we have the filters. So you notice that these filters are one-sided. And this is because of something called DFT conjugate symmetry. In other words, that is half of the discrete Fourier transform is a conjugate of the other half. So in theory, we could take half of the Fourier trans DFT, cut it in half, and reconstruct it the other half by taking its conjugate. So let's let's just dive in. We're gonna go ahead and plot some of this stuff. We've already seen the magnitude and phase. This is just a replot of it separately, and we'll get to the reconstruction in a little bit. But I just want to go over some of the construction of the angular filters because it's the angular filters that are gonna really make the difference because this. This is how we're going to take a single lobe. So we do the same thing. Take the polar grid right here. We get angle and radius. We're basically converting the frequency basis from Cartesian to polar. And we have our function that gives us the angle mask. So if you're not sure what the angle mask is, here's what they look like. But let's dive in and see what we're doing here. So we are basically going to take one lobe right here and we have this factor right here which is the difference and we're not taking out the absolute value like we did with the regular pyramid but, but this this right here is going to make sure that we don't get any negative frequencies because the complex pyramid is positive frequencies only so we're going to get our angle mass but let's let's mess around with angle two now we can see angle right here it starts at pi goes all the way to negative pi but when we do this thing right here we're actually going to rotate the angle as we go through our different orientations and then we do our do our um, boolean operation we're going to only get half of it so this translates to taking a single lobe with our radial masks and at the end of the day we're we're taking these rings right here but we're really only getting half a ring so 
that's where we're getting here. And we could actually see in the steerable pyramid code if we look up this complex peer. So we're setting this here. We do the different angle mask operation. And in this one, we're not taking the real value. We're gonna leave both the comp we're gonna build the pyramid with the complex values, and we're gonna have both of them. And it actually is different than if we were to take the the um the regular pyramid because we're not constructing the angle mask in the same manner. Um, same thing right here. Um, the reconstruction is a little bit different. We add this factor of two. What this factor of two does is it accounts for the fact that we are only using half of the pyramid or half of the angle to reconstruct it. And we add that factor of two in to get a little bit more power. And if we take this away, we can see that it actually inhibits the ability of the pyramid to be reconstructed properly. And I have a article in the bio that I will link that kind of goes through that in a little bit more detail. And same thing right there. So that, that's basically all there is to it. Now let's get to the reconstruction. So you might notice that when we take the DFT, we have our DFT of our image, but we have our DFT of the reconstruction. You could see that this is really not the same. You can see it definitely has higher power levels here, but we're missing information in this. And this is kind of comes into the DFT conjugate symmetry. You can even see that we have a stark drop off here all the way to net below negative 60 on this diagonal cut right here. So you can see at the end of the day, we do actually have the information because of DFT symmetry. It's just that we have, we have the high pass information right here. But in this radial and these radial subbands, we're actually missing it. But we do scale it higher right here. We can see that we are only about twelve right there, and we're probably a little bit higher here. So the reconstructed image looks the same. Checking the numerical differences, we actually do get something that is very close to zero. So that's all for this one. I'll see y'all in the next one.